So basically, in terms of how we break down uh, HR and, uh, and talent within our business, we break it into five elements. So it's about growing the business, attracting the right people to the business, having a robust hiring process to make sure that we're bringing the right people into our, our businesses. There's a piece about engaging our, our teams and, uh, and our talent and, and retaining people to enable us to grow. So it's a sort of self-fulfilling cycle in some ways, if you like. And I'll, I'll pass you over to Nicola just to say a little bit about um, about how we how we support different levels of business. Yeah, so hi everyone. Um, we look at businesses and probably a bit like yourselves, they're always at different stages, so different kind of I guess life cycles almost. So you may be a startup. You might have just got going like us. We're actually just a year old. Um, we started right in the middle of a pandemic, which some people might have said we were we were crazy, but we saw you know an amazing opportunity there to support businesses going through a difficult time. So you could be a startup. These sorts of things with HR can be really complex and quite tricky if it's all new to you. So it's really important that you just really get a good grasp of what it is you need to do as a startup um, and what's important when you're starting to think about hiring the first employees into your business. So you may have got sort of past that, that early stage and you might be looking at the moment to scale up a bit especially coming out of the, the kind of crisis um, with the roadmap from the government. I've noticed definitely the job boards are really busy again. Companies are starting to look to the future, which is really great. You know, it's been a, a dark time, I think, for, for quite a few businesses. Um, so it's really nice that at the moment we're starting to, to look to grow again and to look at, at scaling and how we might um, get more people into the business or certainly reshaping maybe some of our clients are telling us that actually new ways of working means that um, with the remote working that's going on um, that actually they're having to reshape what they're doing um, and look at their organization in a different way um, so in terms of um, what we're looking to cover with you today, we've we've kind of broken down the discussion into into five different areas. So we're going to talk a little bit, first of all, about the basic policy and, and governance that it's important to have in place. We'll then go on and talk a little bit about recruitment and onboarding and, and some of the uh, the the art and the, the key items around that. We're going to look at what we believe to be quite a, an important cornerstone document in your employee handbook because that's a place where you can put a lot of your policy and procedure and it's also quite a nice hook to be able to tell people new, new people joining your business a little bit about your culture and how you do things around uh, around your your business so um, i think that's quite an important part of the discussion today we're also going to look at uh, performance optimizing performance and how we develop our people when when we begin to to uh, come together as a team and we're also going to touch on what we call our bulletproof HR toolkit which is just a means of being able to uh, get all those essentials that we're going to talk about in, in place and and uh, enable you to uh, sort of have all those all those people essentials in place and as I said at the end we're going to hopefully leave plenty of time uh, so that, that we can we can have a, a Q and a session. So firstly, around the people policy and governance, I mean, this is this is, I suppose, quite a, a or can be quite a scary area because it's about what, what do I need to have in place to be able to um, to be able to employ people? Uh, is there some some planning in place before you do, before you go and, and start hiring people? And, and what are the key documents that it's important that that we have in place to, to enable us to, to bring people on board and and help have them hit, hit the ground running effectively? So some of the things that, that we've identified as being particularly important, and some of these may be very obvious, uh, but first of all, we've got your, your job description. Now, it's important in a, in a growing business that, that people can be flexible enough around their, uh, their time, that they're not rigidly expecting to be uh, working within a job description. But at the same time, you want to have the, um, 
make sure that there's not any ambiguity there between roles and, and have people crossing over. Um, so in after doing your initial organisational design and, and designing your, your organisation in, in the way that uh, you're you're carving up that work, it's then important to have job descriptions in place so people are clear on doing what they're doing. On the back of that, I think there are some essential um, employment policies that you need to have in place. So some of those that, that immediately spring to mind would be your disciplinary and grievance policy. Not ones that you would expect to be using all the time, but they are ones that are very important in, um, in having in, in place. You would also around your, um, your 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 culture want to have things in place around diversity and inclusion to show that you know you're you're a modern employer who's going to invite applications from across the uh, the community to be able to build the 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 best team. I think there's a lot of um, a lot of information and a lot of statistics out there to show that where you have a diverse organisation, you're going to be a better performing organisation. Um, so it's important to, to start to have these basics in place uh, as you bring people on. In addition, you want to be able to offer somebody a role in a, a legally compliant way and make sure that you've got a contract of employment in place, uh, that people understand what it is that, that their expectations are. And it also lays things out clearly for you. Now, we do find sometimes that some employers prefer not to put some of this information in writing, but in actual fact, um, it, it protects you in every way as much as it protects an individual to have these things in writing and to have a sort of clear and robust and legally compliant contract in place is, is important. Uh, and also to, to have the right checklists in place to make sure that you've followed the right processes and that, that you're legally compliant and that people, for example, are um, eligible to work in the UK before you, you take them on. So these sort of uh, checklists are also something that, that we think is particularly important when you're, when you're growing your business. I'll now pass back over to Nicola, who's our uh, recruitment expert, to tell us a little bit more about recruitment and onboarding. Yeah, so just sort of following on um, from what Ian was, was talking about there, once you've got like the essentials and the basics in place, you know, you feel much more sort of safeguarded and settled, you know, you're avoiding any tribunals, anything like that. And you feel very confident then in terms of bringing people into the business. And also when you are hiring people in that way, and they can see that you're very professional, that you've got all of the right um, sort of like tools in place, the right um, paperwork. It makes them feel much more settled, I think, um, and keen to join your business. So how do we go about attracting that talent? You know, there are lots and lots of different ways. Um, there are, you know, lots of different thoughts around this. Um, but I would suggest that you do like, help yourself in terms of spreading your net, if you like, sort of wide and far. Um, there are some great job boards out there. There's also different channels that we recommend. So you can use your network. You can obviously use LinkedIn, Facebook even for certain types of roles. There are free resources and there are obviously paid for resources. But if you really want to get a good spread of candidates, don't be afraid to put a little bit of money behind that and actually pay for some quality um, job boards rather than just thinking, oh, I can put something on Indeed, it's free. Um, you may not always get the, the best um, sort of like selection of candidates doing that. Also, remember when you're interviewing, make sure that you really prep and prepare for your interviews. So try and write some interview questions beforehand. Use the same interview questions for everyone that you interview. So therefore you can really benchmark your candidates. So if you're asking everyone those same questions at the end of your interviewing round, you can actually go back and you will be looking at sort of scoring those people against criteria that's right for that particular role. Otherwise, it's very tempting, especially when you're new to hiring, to actually just hire the person that you seem to like the best or get on with the best. And actually, they might not be the best person for the job. So you're really looking at cultural fit and personality, of course, is super important. But also, can they actually do the job or do they have the ability to learn to do the job? And sometimes it's really you know, important that we look at that as well. So they may not have done all aspects 
list of everything that you need in the past. But if you think that they've got the right attitude and they can learn a skill, then don't be afraid to hire and train. Um, also remember that it is a two-way process, so make sure you get them, um, give them the opportunity to ask you lots of questions as well, and you're very open with the information. Um, also, sort of going through, when you sometimes do advertise, you might end up with a hundred applications, more even at the moment we're finding. So when you're screening through, Again, if you've done that prep work up front, you'll know what you're actually screening against. So you're screening against certain criteria. So could it be that they need to live quite locally or have they had to do that in the past? What particular types of maybe software skills they might need? So really look at what your screening criteria is before you go to that pool of candidates. Then also lay out the interview process for the candidate. Make sure that they know like who are they going to be meeting, how many interviews you're going to have in your process, what does that look like. Try and avoid as well one-on-one -on -one interviews. This is really like not necessarily a great thing to do. If you're the only person in the business then fine or you could perhaps bring in someone like us like an HR consultant to help or someone else that you know that has another business just to have that sounding board but try to avoid those one-on-ones um, and also as I say always let the candidate know the steps of the process that are happening as they happen. So um, if you want them to do a task or something like that, then just make sure that they're aware at the beginning of what those steps are going to be. You might also as well want to double check what else have they got going on at the moment. Obviously, if someone's in the job market, they're probably quite active. So you might forget to ask those questions and then you might get all the way through your interview process, offer them the job, only to find that they say, actually, I've just accepted something else yesterday. Um, so you want to just keep abreast of what else they're doing um, so that you can also keep your process quite timely, especially if there's someone that you really like. Um, I would suggest that doing the right to work checklist is super important. Um, there are companies that do background checking for very, um, um, you know, sort of um, lean cost. So it's always worth perhaps putting that out um, and just making sure that I have got the right to work in the UK. Um, and referencing, I would suggest that you ask them for two or three references, either from a previous employer or a personal referee as well. And then when you've made that final decision and you've offered them the job and they've accepted, you really need to get to work now on what your onboarding looks like. So lots of evidence that if someone is not onboarded into your company, and by onboarding we mean when they start, like what does their starting point look like? And if you don't get that right, if you don't give them a wow experience, then evidence suggests that they'll probably leave your company fairly quickly. So you can access um, lots of um, resources out there, but really have a think about um, what it feels like to start a new job, who they might need to meet, what they might need to know, what tools you have. Like, so really make sure that you're super thorough in that first few weeks in terms of setting them up for success, because ultimately that time spent is really going to help you and your business going forward. So once they're in place um, and they've got through their onboarding, we then want to look to see how we might manage and develop our people. So over that first few weeks, make sure you keep in regular contact, give them the opportunity to feedback as well. Um, and especially if this is all new to you, you want to get that onboarding experience right. So ask the new people to give you feedback on that. Really set them some clear goals. So over that first sort of four weeks up to the sort of first three months, which is probably going to be your probation period, make sure that they do have some really clear goals and objectives there. And I'm sure I don't need to tell you all what a SMART goal is, but try and make them SMART um, so that they are really easy to understand and to follow. And then have little regular check-ins. So we definitely like have a much more progressive view on people management and we don't really uh, um, uphold the annual appraisal. So much more kind of like regular conversational check-ins are, um, um, are much more productive um, these days and um, this is what we recommend that you work with. Also if you have got a sizable team then recognising performance and maybe 
be even using peer-to-peer -peer recognition is a great way of making people feel really valued. Often companies think that they have to give loads of benefits and you know things that cost a lot, but actually sometimes it's the recognition that people really want. Um, and that could be you know as simple as just having a team meeting and recognising someone that week for, for what they've done in, in terms of a good job. Meet regularly, as we say, and make sure that that um, session is documented in some way, even if it's just um, a workbook that you might give someone um, and there's two-way feedback or there are definitely some amazing tools um, that you can use online. And if you want any information about those tools, do drop us a line afterwards and I can recommend, again, some really cost-effective tools that help you keep everything in one place and on track. It is important to develop talent. It's often, you know, businesses, especially small businesses, we're so busy all the time that we're literally in the thick of it, doing business as usual day in, day out, and we forget actually that people want a career path. So um, if you're a small business, it doesn't have to be really onerous, um, but do think about what the next steps are for them and ask them, you know, what do you need? What are you looking to do next? Because actually if people stay with you, they will definitely help to grow your business. On the flip side, don't be afraid if you've made a bad hire or you think someone's not quite a cultural fit. Don't be afraid to um, think about what the next steps might be in terms of taking that person out of your business. If you're not used to hiring and firing, sometimes it can be really difficult and we, we end up like working around these people as opposed to just maybe dealing with the, 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 the problem head on. So again, if you're unsure of anything there, just talk it through with an expert so you know that you're covering yourself and you're doing the process right. And um, so, yeah, just a few tips there on, on how to develop people. The next document um, we wanted to move on and talk to you a little bit about is the employee handbook. So I think, as I said at the beginning, this is a really useful document to uh, be able to get everything about your organisation into, into one place. So from a sort of administrative and a, a legislative point of view, all the things that you need to be letting your people know about can all be in one place at one time. The other side of it that's also equally as, as useful is that it helps you to sort of start to define your culture and the way that you do things within your organisation and around your organisation. Because while policies and procedures can be, um, you know, very, very similar between organisations, the way in which they're applied and uh, the, the range of benefits that you might decide to give alongside another uh, organization or or just um, your values, your behaviors, this sort of thing that that things that are important to you as a business. Uh, this is also a very useful document to get things in there. It helps to set the culture, helps everybody to understand how how things work around the organization. It sets clear expectations and rules of the road around sort of issues such as conduct and everything down to what your dress code might be, what your working hours might be, something that's uh, very uh, important at the moment in terms of how, how often you expect people to be in the office or to what extent they're able to work from home. All of these sorts of things can, can all be put in the one place and uh, can also sort of, you can also link points in a formal contract of employment. You can reference off of that and put things into the staff handbook that you then might want to change at a different point in the future. So for example, you may offer a certain amount of benefits now and that might be different going forward. Rather than change it in everybody's contract, it's something that you can just change in one place in the employee handbook and reissue that. And when I say reissue it, most of these would be uh, online and something that you would be able to, to access um, in, a, in a sort of virtual slide deck or something like that now is, is often the way that you do it, but it has everything in one place very, very useful document and one that, that we um, think it's an important highlighting just because it's so versatile and can cover so much. 